peace to those to help and nourish people. Amen. You can take your seats if you can. Well, tonight to enjoy God. I was glad when they said unto what? Let us go into the house of the Lord. A, a man once asked me a question, a uh, preacher, uh, why is it, why can't we just stay at home and just, um, and just enjoy God? I said, well, uh, it, it is said that I was glad when they said unto me, let's go in the house of God. Well, he stated, isn't God everywhere? I said, yes, he's everywhere. But he chose the house of God, a dwelling place. Come on now. Hmm? He chose the house of God, a dwelling place. You could sleep in other people's homes, but you could enjoy your bed better in your crib than any other place. So God chooses, God chooses things. God is a mountaineer. Come on now, he hangs high. God choose, chose high places. Come on now. God has ways of doing things. And God, the way God does things is different than man, the way that man does things. Come on now. Hmm? Somebody say amen. It took John Glenn, uh, it took John Glenn four hours to orbit around the earth. Four hours. Hmm? 55 minutes and 23 seconds to go around 24,900 miles. That's supposed to be how wide the globe is. It's lopsided, the globe, the earth is not totally round. It's lopsided like some folks' lives are. Amen. God has a way of doing things. Doctors can operate on you. I got a cut from here to here. In 1965, they took my kidney out, <coughs> sat it up on the stand, and cut it open uh, like they were cutting open a banana, removed the blood clog out. Mm? I went in surgery. I wasn't saved then. Just got through partying and shacking with Elizabeth. <laughs> they operate on me, Bishop, from 8 o'clock that morning to 4 p.m. in the evening. It only takes God one third of a minute to heal your body. One third of a minute is just 20 seconds. It just takes God one third of a second. Hmm? Come on now. Just one third of a second. Get your miracle. Huh? One third of a second. It's 333.33 three, three, three point, three, three, three point microseconds. I was in a crusade, and I'm going to tell you about this little baby. This baby made a clothes manufacturing business millions. Look at this baby. Y'all don't know who this baby is, but I'm going to share some with you about this baby. 20 years ago, the mother attended my service in Chicago, Illinois. Stomach lopsided. Ma'am, why are you crying the way you cry? Because tomorrow the baby will be dead. And I said, who told you that? The doctor. And I squat and I looked and I peeped into the water bag and I saw uh, this little baby almost dead. I said, the baby will live, but it will be a small baby. It will become famous because of the clothes it wear. And this baby, I'm bringing the picture tomorrow, not the other picture. And the girl, the mother, went into labor that next day. I told her you'd be in labor just for an hour, 10 minutes. She had a little girl, whew, one pound and six ounces. What made the baby famous was Cabbage Patch Clothes. Y'all remember the Cabbage Patch Baby? This is, this is the Cabbage Patch Baby. I'm bringing uh, a picture of her now. Now she don't weigh one pound and six ounces. She weighs 352 pounds. And I told her last time I saw you when you shout, don't you step on my cord. <laughs> Isn't God wonderful? 
God is good all the time. We're going to have a high time in God on tonight. I come to preach to you, to minister to you. I am not a doom prophet, but I speak that which God put in my spirit. Come on now. Everybody need a word from God. It's not always about your material. It's not always about, well, oh, is this my husband? If he's married, he's not. Isn't God wonderful? So there's all type of, God don't move the same way all the time. He don't move the same way all the time. And the reason why, Bishop and Prophetess, is because we don't have the same needs all the time. Come on now. When God healed me in 09 of diabetes, when he wiped it totally out of my physical idyllic system, sometimes, my friends, there is an after effect of a situation, of a trial, of a circumstance. You may say, I'm out of the test. I, I, I got it made now. No, sometimes the test leaves an after effect. Uh, uh, Samson, come on now, slew 1,000 men. He, Samson, is that right? But he was a thirst. He had victory over the Philistines, but his physical needs some uh, attention from God. Diabetes messed up my eye and messed the blood vessel up. My side was swollen, and I had an irregular heartbeat. I told God, you're not a half God. Come on now. I love whole chickens. I'll eat a whole uh, apple pie. <laughs> God, you do things in the fullness. There's 24 hours a day. The woman in Mark 5, uh, Jesus said, go your way. Thy faith has made thee. You're not a half God. There's nothing partial about you. Come on now. Hmm? And then it took five months for God to go in and to do uh, the da uh, heal the damage up what diabetes had left behind. Tonight is a very powerful night, and God's going to meet us here in the edifice. There's a word from God. I don't care how much you know your Bible, how many times you have read your scripture. Come on now. You could never, ever say, I don't need no more teaching. I've been in ministry going on 51 years. You're looking at a 72-year-old Hercules. 72. I read the Bible eight times, but I'm still learning. We don't stop right there. We learn that we may not become spoiled brats when it comes to God. A small brat, come on now, just stomp his feet and get whatever he wants on the silver platter. But we're living in a way so that we have to prove unto God that we may grow in grace by being docile. Docile, I want to learn. I need to know. Come on now, huh? I want to know. I told God when I first went in ministry, show me, God, how the enemy would love to trick me and make me go back out in the world. I was three months saved. A woman walked by with a real tight skirt on, shaking. I said, the devil's a lie. Let me cross the street real quick and get out of here. <laughs> Isn't God wonderful? We're not perfect. Just because you're holy, you're not perfect. Come on now. Because you have flesh that's connected on your bones. And sometimes you have problems with life and things. Job said in Job 14, one man that is born a woman is of a and full of troubles. Come on now. Job was saying, life itself, in that verse, is unfair. Man that is born of a woman in a few days, uh, no, man that is born of a woman, born in holy, should live a long time. Come on now. It's a few days and full of troubles. Oh, I feel this thing. Isn't God wonderful? But Jesus said, wait, Job, you said enough. Jesus stepped in and said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That means uh, the, the way of Christ bypassed 100,000 times what Job said. I don't believe that you should have 
to become rich playing the lottery. Uh, I was telling Peter Popoff, the testimonies are very splendid and good. When you, when you come back on television, my, my friend, I'll be back on Peter sometime this year. I said, but add more testimonies than lottery. Put somebody on that got saved. Even if it was from dipping snuff. Somebody say amen. Oh, get somebody by the hand. Say, I need a word tonight. Come on, say it again. I need a word from God. Give me just a few minutes. I'll be brief. Quivering and apicolated. I feel so good. Amen. An angel came in the room. Come on now. An angel came in my room. And he said, son, tell the people that. Tell the people that I have not forgotten them. And this little angel popped and disappeared into smoke. And my dog started barking. Somebody say amen. Let me go ahead and teach or preach a little bit tonight. Amen. I feel God right now. We're going in to thank God for them. Amen. Listen, look at the prophetess. Look at the bishop. Um, these folk be dressing, man. They 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 they, they be dressing, man. They be they run the rings around. Come on now. Folk, it was just a conservative look, the panache look. I was telling the prophet, I said, that in Spain, when I'm in Spain, in Barcelona, the Spanish women, they wear their hair slicked back, just slicked back. And, uh, and I started to ask her, don't Bishop be slicking your hair back with his hand? Let me go ahead and preach tonight. <laughs> Isn't God wonderful? Nice people. Let's go quickly into 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, 23rd chapter. 1 Samuel, 23rd chapter. Can you move it from me, my friend? 23rd chapter. 1 Samuel 23rd chapter. Verse 9, 10, 11, 12, verse 14, and verse 23. God gives me messages after I go into the hotel suite and feed my German Shepherd Husky and take her out to the grass to pay her tax. Then I'll pray between two to three hours, God, give me what to give the people. I don't sit down and say, maybe they need this. God don't go with maybe, maybe. Come on now. If he say maybe, he don't know. So he'll tell you, this is what you need. He needs this. She needs that. Come on now. I kept seeing the word appear in the back tonight back there. And I don't know. Amen. It had an M on the north. It's Monticello or what? Amen. I feel God right now. Monticello? Okay. See? See? It kept appearing before me. Amen. See? It's not. You can't guess. Psychics guess. They guess. Hmm? How can a psychic tell you where your husband is and she don't know where hers is? Matis, Maticella, I'm going to minister to you. Okay, I'm going to minister to you. I'm going to minister to, to, to you also, your physical body. You have too much inflammation and acid in your system. And God is going to rip that away. And some children are going to start listening to you, what you tell them. This beautiful young girl. Hey. Hmm? Isn't God wonderful? You don't always need music to have church. Is that right? Somebody say amen. We're going into 1 Samuel, 23rd chapter, verse 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, and verse 23. I just want to talk a little bit tonight. I'm going to let y'all out kind of early. Thank God for the anointing. And it reads thus, 
And David knew that Saul secretly practiced. Now this is a word tonight, y'all. This is it. This, this is going to trail you the rest of this year. It's going to trail you. It's going to connect with some things that you've been trying to connect with. It's going to be a key to unlock something that man cannot unlock. I was speaking in tongue once. A drunk man said in the service, Sir, wh 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 what country are you from? Read that for me again, please. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. David knew. There's a lot of things you know about your enemies. There's things you know about some of your friends that's getting ready to walk on the mischief. So if you know it, knew is cognitious. If you know something, you know that you know that you know. And the know works with a word called discernment. Detection and discernment are next door neighbors. Detection don't allow you to know exactly what it is. But discernment taps in to what it is. I was out today leaving the radio uh, broadcast and had to go out by the mall. And uh, I'm not stuck on myself. And, and, and I love everybody. Come on now. Uh, I, I don't love the way some folk do stuff. Uh, and, and sin and stuff. But I went over to ask a person a certain uh, area I wanted to go get something. And this faggot, I'm sorry, this young man came up. How you doing? <laughs> didn't I? Didn't I? How you? Okay. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief. There's things that folk doing undercover that you don't even know anything about. But I feel that you ought to know what's going on. Come on now. Come on. There's times you detect that something's not right about this person. It's some, she shouts and she could outdance Soul Train, but it's something somewhere that's wrong. If it's something wrong, you need to find out what is it that's wrong. Come on now. It was done. Saul was doing things undercover, camouflaging secretly towards David. And when people start hanging around your enemies, they may turn on you. Hmm? Come on now. Some of your enemies may be in your own family. Some of your enemies may be in your own church. On your own job. But it's good to know that you know that who's for you, who's praying for you. Come on, everybody's not praying for you. Everybody don't love you. Everybody's not in your corner and everybody don't have your back. Somebody say amen. Read on please if you will. And he said to Abatha the priest, bring, yes. hither, bring hither the ephod. Bring it, bring it forth, the ephod that is worn. Sometimes people, they would wear, wear those garments like on their physical bodies to connect with God, to see if God would deal with them in a vision or in a dream. And some folk just wanted to wear it just to think that they were special. Come on now, nothing but a front. Read on, please. Then said David, then said David, O Lord God of Israel, O Lord God of Israel, that servant has certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Kalia. I got the word. Somebody squealed uh -huh, and said Saul is coming to this territory. He's coming. Sometime the enemy comes to you. Sometime you go to him. Sometime you pass through his territory. Huh? Tread upon serpents and scorpions. In his territory, it's a fight that goes on. Huh? On your territory, he's got to lose. Because that's your turf. It says prohibit to all demons. So the devil got to do the moonwalk and get away somewhere else. Somebody say amen. Yes. Seek it to come to Kalia to destroy the city Kalea for my sake. To destroy because of me, because he's after me. Saul's after me. He's got a thing in his heart against me. A person has something in their heart against you. It's not in their chest. It's in their spirit. And it's hidden, and you can't see until it comes out. You don't know how sweet coffee is 
until you stir the white sugar at the bottom of the cup. You don't know what a person have in them until they act up. Until the temper begin to rise like a miniskirt. Latokobusuka. And it reads thus. Then said David. Then said David. O Lord God of Israel. Yes. Thy servant have certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Kalia. Yes, to, read. To destroy the city for my sake. Yes. Will the men of Kalia deliver me up into his hand? Lord, will the men of Kalia deliver me up into his hand, into his authority? He asked the question. If you glimpse up there at H-A-N-D hand, you will see a question mark, which is interrogative. It's questionable. Will he? Will he not? I don't know. Come on now. I had a vision of three people. Uh, 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 Clinton's, Hillary Clinton and a black president and another president and there was a question mark over each one of their heads. I saw President Obama being the president but I didn't know it was him because I didn't see his name. I just saw a man with an afro. You can't show me a white person really with an afro. Mostly all spooks wear afros. And it reads thus, Will Saul come down as thy servant have heard? Will he come down? Will Saul, Lord, Lord, will Saul come down? When you pray unto God, you pray out of your heart. But when you make sense to God, remember God responds to your senses. Amen. There's a time you have to stop at attention and dry the tears from your eyeballs and blow the snot from each nostril. Come on now. And talk to God as though ain't going to be no tomorrow. Somebody say Amen. Say amen again. Amen. Read on, please, if you will. O Lord God of Israel, oh. I beseech thee. Yeah, I beseech thee, Lord. Tell thy servant, and the Lord said, he will come down. He will come down. Saul is coming down. You asked David, so I'm telling you what I know. God know everything. Amen. Everything. Nothing is hidden from God. Amen. God know tomorrow. He know next week. He knows what's going to happen the next minute. Nothing is hidden from God because God, oh, is the God El Roi, the all-seeing God. God sees and he knows all things. God is inimitable. He's inimitable. Somebody say amen. Come here, baby. He's inimitable. Walk beside me. And nobody can match God. Come on now. Okay, you can sit down. He's inimitable. He's so generous. He's in a class by his own. He's in his own class. God don't have to guess. God don't have to think. God don't have to say, I should have done this. God don't speak anything to us because we don't need to hear anything. We need to hear something. There's times that people need to learn how to pray. God, if you can feel this pain in my leg, he ain't going to feel it. Oh, God, if you could feel this, if you could feel this pain, God, you don't want to feel it. Come on, he, he, he's not a God that feels pain. He's a God of compassion. Is that right? Lord, will, will he come down? What's going to happen? I beseech thee, tell the, thy servant. And the Lord said only four words in verse 11, 5 and verse 12. Read. Then said David, with the men of Kalia no, deliver go me. Go back down. To, no, listen, go ahead. Go ahead. Will deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul. Yes. And the Lord said, they will deliver thee up. They will deliver thee up. They will. That's five words that God said. They will. A lot of, it, it don't take God to talk a whole lot of words like Sean Shannon. 655 words per minute. God don't have to do a lot of talking if he don't want. He could just, just say, it's, it, it's in my hand now. So that means you step back. Hold your head up. Come on now. So he wants you, hold your head up. Don't mean hold your head up on your shoulders. Hold your head up. Be inspired. Be encouraged. The sun is shining. So don't go outside to see if it's shining. <laughs> There's no shining in you. Isn't God wonderful? Huh? They will deliver thee up. They will. Read on, please, next scripture. 
And Verse. David abode in the wilderness and strongholds. Now watch this now. David abode in the wilderness. David and his men. Come on now. Somebody say amen. Read. And remain in a mountain in the wilderness. Go, except. go back again. Reverse. Go back to 12. 12. Then said David, will, yes. the, will the men of Kalea deliver me, deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, they will deliver thee up. Read the next one, 13. Then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Kalea. Out of Kalea. They begin to escape. Why David is scared he can't? He's not. God is just shifting David. There's a shifting that's getting ready to go on. God's going to shift you to another direction. God's going to shift you to another avenue. God's going to shift you away from certain folk. God's going to shift you away from certain things. God's going to shift you away from certain people in your own family. God may shift you away from a certain friend. And you know she gossip and have diarrhea from the mouth and flow and don't know when to stop. So God is going to shift you away. So David departed out of Kalia. He shifted, yes? And went whithersoever they could go. Wherever they could go. Wherever they could go. Wherever they would go. Wherever they supposed to have went. Yes? And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Kalia. And David escaped. Oh, shucks. Why didn't we go a week ago? He was gone a week. And he, yes? Forbear to go forth. To go forth. Read. And David abode in the wilderness, the wilderness and strongholds. There's and a time that you need to go back to the wilderness. Come on now. Huh? And David abode in the wilderness. It was said by Dr. Finkelstein, it never rained there. Uncultivated area. Wildlife, beasts, untrained animals. Come on now. It was said that it would rain sometime uh, once a year. And then it was said by another Dr. Finkelstein that it didn't rain no time. So this is where David abode. But he abode a certain place in the wilderness. I don't care what you're going through. There's a place that God will steal your spirit and relax your attitude. Come on, somebody. Read on, please. Remain in the mountain, in the wilderness. And remain in the mountain, in, in the mountain, not lowland, but highland. Come on now. You could be in the wilderness, but be in a certain place or height in God. Read. And Saul sought him every day. Every day Saul sought him. Yes. But God delivered him not into his hand. He did not allow David to fall into the captivity of Saul. Your enemy cannot figure the holiness out in you. Because every plan they have, it backfires and shifts somewhere else. Somebody say amen. Verse 23, I'm coming to an end. Yes. See therefore and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself. Lurking places. Hiding places. Lurking, lurking, lurking. See therefore and take knowledge of of all the lurking places. Get get to know. Find out well, his hangouts. How to, the thing, the way he does things. Come on now. Huh? Uh, sh find out his weaknesses. Find out his strength. Come on now. Hmm? Find it out. Delilah didn't know. I'm talking about Samson now. Delilah didn't know the strength of Samson.